five billion years ago. Something was stirring out in space. A huge cloud of hydrogen and helium was collapsing. The gas rushed towards the center of the mass, fusing together until it burst into life as the star that we now know as the sun. As the sun was forming. So were the planets. Before our star was born. Another larger one had died in a supernova. Filling the cloud with gas and dust. This debris gradually formed a protoplanetary disk a huge flat ring comprising hundreds of lumps of rock and ice known as planetesimals. These planetesimals were the building blocks of the solar system. After a few million years of crashing and melding together, these bodies began to resemble the planets as we know them today. Close to the sun, temperatures were too high for volatile chemicals such as water to remain solid in any quantities. The initial protoplanetary disk contained only a small amount of rocky solid material. So the four planets that formed closest to the sun were comparatively small. However, 750 million kilometers from the Earth. At what is now the outer edge of the asteroid belt. Temperatures were cool enough for gases to form, creating the gas giants Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. It wasn't just planets forming. though several moons did too. A few, including our own, had a much more violent beginning. When the infant Earth collided with another young planet, a huge plume of debris was trailed behind. After a few hundred million years, it melded together to create our planet's largest companion, the Moon. By four billion years ago, the planets and moons had been formed. But the solar system still looked very different from its current state. There were probably many more planets than the eight we know today and they would have been much closer together. Over time, the outer planets began to move slowly away from the sun, throwing the gravitational forces of the solar system off balance. Craters on the moon are evidence of the collisions it experienced in the early universe. The result was that several early planets were thrown out into deep space the remaining debris was pelted against the planets. This period, now known as the late heavy bombardment, left scars that can still be seen on the faces of the moon, Mars and other rocky planets. On Earth, such craters have been hidden by the actions of volcanism or worn away by the atmosphere. The most significant relic left on our planet from that bombardment is the array of elements left behind. During Earth's formation, metals such as gold and copper sank to the core. So the deposits we find in the crust today must have arrived on asteroids and comets at a later date. Perhaps the most important delivery to our planet was water. 
the early solar system was far too hot for water to settle. But by the time of the late heavy bombardment, temperatures had dropped significantly. When comets crashed into the surface of the early planets, water didn't boil off immediately, but instead formed oceans. After hundreds of millions of years, the planets had settled into their orbits and began to grow and evolve. Volcanism shaped their surfaces, while deep inside, molten cores began to cool. The cores of the smaller terrestrial planets solidified without the flow of metallic cores. Their protective magnetic fields faded, leaving their atmospheres unshielded from solar winds. As time progressed, such differences between each world became exaggerated, leading to the variation in planets that we see in the solar system today.